Check, check. What's up, everyone? What's good? Amen. That's right. Couldn't stay away for more than one service. We had to come back and run it back. Amen. That's us. We are going to have some fun tonight. We will be reading out of James, um, James 4, 7. Uh, before that, man, what an awesome worship service that was tonight, man. Uh, feels good to come in and worship like that. My, my church was probably like, praise the Lord. I'm sick of this guy's voice. <laughs> But praise God that we're going to have some faithful men stepping up soon. Come on. But yeah, we'll be reading out of James 4, 7. As you turn to that in your Bible, we are going to get started. So I want to talk about this fight uh, that happened some time ago. 60,000 people turned up to this event. It was advertised, the rumble in the jungle. This was 1974, October 30th. There was an undefeated world heavyweight champion. He had 37 knockouts. 40 wins to his name. He was 25 years old. His name was George Foreman. All right. And so George Foreman was going into this fight. All right. And they all picked him to win. Now, maybe you've known the story, but he was fighting against Muhammad Ali, known as the greatest boxer of all time. He was 36 years old. He pretty much was counted out of this fight. They said he was too old. He hadn't had a fight in a long time uh, because of things that happened in their country. And so they basically wrote him off. They said, you know what? This guy is not going to win this fight. So Muhammad Ali went into this fight. And the first thing that he did is he went up to him and then he sort of leaned up against the ropes and told George Foreman to punch. He goes, come on, give me your best shot. So George Foreman is going away at him, starting to throw hooks at him. For eight rounds, Muhammad Ali is up against the ropes. For eight rounds, he let his opponent smack him around, hit him in the stomach, hit him in the face. But then on the eighth round, George Foreman started to get tired. Muhammad Ali saw that he was getting tired, so he started to fight back. Long story short, Muhammad Ali drops him in the eighth round and goes through to be known as the greatest boxer of all time. Now, the reason why I share this story tonight is because we are going to get into a spiritual battle with the devil. Amen? He's going to come at us hard for eight rounds, but it's up to us whether we are going to resist those attacks, whether we are going to absorb those hits, because um, sooner or later, the devil is going to flee. Amen? He is going to flee. And so tonight's sermon is called Rumble in the Jungle. We are going to read out of James 4, 7. Very short scripture tonight. It says, therefore submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Amen. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Let us pray tonight. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that we are able to gather tonight and hear your word. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you help us gain spiritual growth, Lord God, that we'll be able to take this into the spiritual battle zone that you have called us to be in, Lord God. I pray, strengthen us as disciples, as Christians, as men and as women. I give you the highest praise and the highest glory. In your mighty name, we all say, Amen. Amen. Rumble in the jungle. My first point for tonight is, are you ready to rumble? Are you ready to rumble? You know, in a spiritual fight, it's only, you're the only person in the ring with what the enemy has put in there. With what the enemy has put in there. And the devil doesn't like to fight fair. He's more patient than you think. Understand that fighting spiritually will take some effort on your end. Amen. It's going to take some effort from you. You're going to have to put in some spiritual sweat in order to be ready for the rumble that's to come. Now, I have a quote from Mike Tyson. He says, all during training, I've been afraid of this man. I think this man might be capable of beating me. I've dreamed of him beating me, for there I've always stayed afraid of him. The closer I get to the ring, the more confident I get. Once I'm in the ring, I'm invincible. Now, Mike Tyson, known as a ferocious fighter, okay? He's known as one of the baddest men, baddest men on earth says that he was afraid of what the other fighter might do to him. Now, his fuel was that the opponent could beat him. But that was his fuel. But our fuel as Christians is how far you are willing to submit to God. Amen? That's our fuel 
as Christians in a spiritual fight, in a spiritual warfare, is how far you are willing to submit to God. James 4, 7, it says, therefore submit to God. The further we are willing to submit to God, the stronger and more prepared we are for the spiritual rumble in the jungle that's going to take place. Amen. For example, you can test your submission by the way that you live your life. For most people, they can only submit as far as going as praying for food. You know, Oof. I'm going to sleep around. I'm going to drink. I'm going to smoke weed. But watch this. I will pray for my food every time the food comes out. Oof. Is that as far as you're willing to submit for God? Ugh. Come on. How about, how about just filling a church seat? You know, a lot of us, we may come from religious backgrounds. Our parents may have forced us to go to Sunday service every single Sunday, and we think that filling a seat is okay. You know, that mentality can come into this church place, and we think that just coming to sit in the seat is all right. Like Jesus Christ died on the cross for you. If we are going to live Christ, like remember, he left the seat in heaven to come and die for you. But we're going to sit and fill a seat. Amen. Oof, are you ready for the rumble in the jungle, church? Come on. For some people's ministry, praise the Lord, we need people in ministry. If you say you're going to jump into ministry, you need to hold the, the highest level of standards in your heart. The problem is we want to jump into ministry but still live like we're not in ministry. Amen. Oof, oof. We still want to have that Netflix account. We still want to have that Disney Plus. We still want to watch anime. We still want to do all these things, but be in ministry for Jesus Christ. Like, follow me as I watch anime. Follow me as I continue to swear. Follow me as I continue to talk smack. Amen, church? You can be in ministry, but you need to be careful of how you are living your life. You need to be careful of how you're doing things. Amen. It's dependent on how much you're willing to submit to God. The more you are involved in God's kingdom, the more submissive you must be to God. That's a must. It doesn't matter how high you be, how, whatever level you get in church, whether you become a pastor, a pastor that sends out another pastor, you know, you still need to be submissive to God. We need to, as a church body, be willing to submit ourselves to God. Because when the devil jumps into the ring, he's going to throw punches at you. And he's going to keep punching you. And it depends how much you're willing to submit. So submit means accept or yield to a superior force to the authority or will of another person. So this means saying to God, I will say no to what I want and say yes to what you want. Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson, these are great men that fought well, but because they were willing to submit to their coaches, they weren't willing to do 50% submission. They did all submission. Whatever they said, they did. Now, Mike Tyson, as you know, he lost his coach. And people say he was never the same boxer after that. I know some Christians who have lost their submission for God and they aren't the same disciples anymore because they dropped their standards. You are only one punch away from getting dropped. Who knows the story of um, Conor McGregor and Aldo? Conor McGregor went all the way up to the top, finally had his fight against Aldo, and it only lasted 14 seconds. The man got dropped after 14 seconds. Conor McGregor went on to win. But spiritually, that's what we're setting ourselves up to. One punch. The devil only needs one punch. And that's it. We're out. 1 Peter 5, 8, it says, Be sober-minded. Be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. For spiritual warfare, for spiritual fight, you need these two things. Amen. So you need one, sorry, 1 Peter 5, 8, to be sober-minded. In order to be ready, you need to have a dedicated mentality. Now, Muhammad Ali said, I hated every minute of training, but I said, don't quit. Suffer now and live the rest of your life as a champion. Muhammad Ali had dominion in his mind to make that choice. I'm not going to quit here. I'm going to push myself through. See, he had dominion there to push himself through physically. We need to do that spiritually too. Amen. So we can make the right choices and the right decisions. Now, this week, one of the brothers, uh, Igani, shared a testimony with one of the, le with the, with the leaders in the Onihanga church. Okay. And so, as you know, Igani makes quite a lot of money. He makes a lot of money, 
But the thing is, he needs to work Sundays. Okay? So that means it takes him out of um, some ministries. But recently, he's made a decision to quit his job and move to another job that's Monday to Friday. He's going to take a big pay cut, like a massive pay cut. Amen? On the final day he's putting through his notice, he texts us and says, boys, I thought it would be easier. I thought it would be easier. I just put it in and that's that. But I'm going through some mind battles right now. Can you pray for me? The perfect picture of dominion right there. He's making choices for God. The battle has come to him, but he asks for prayer. Perfect picture of dominion in your mind. Even though he was making heaps of money, he's willing to leave to fulfill the will of God. That's the dedicated mentality that we should have. We need to understand that God will honor you if you make those choices. Like, praise the Lord for that. But you as an individual, you've set yourself for standards that you can hold yourself to. Like the next time you have a battle, you know that you already fought the fight over here. You already fought the fight over here. You've already made yourself stronger. But some people, because they didn't fight that fight over there, now they've come into their salvation. Easy. You're just a one punch. One punch away. One punch away because you weren't willing to fight that battle down there. You were willing to dodge fights. You weren't ready to rumble. You were ready to run. Amen. If you are ready to rumble, you have this type of mentality, then you know everything that you do is for the king. You know that everything that you have done or everything that you have dedicated yourself to is the king. Because God needs people who are willing to be this dedicated. Instead of trying to do what you want and fit God into your plans, you, you should change your circumstances to fit the will of God. Amen. Don't try and fit God into your plans. Instead, fit your life into God's plans. Amen. Are you dedicated to the king? So that is a dedicated mentality. And two is dedicated eyes. First Peter 5, 8. It says, be watchful. Be watchful. What be watchful means is having dedicated eyes. It means that you're always on the lookout. You're always trying to check things. You're always trying to see things from a full view. Amen. And so it would be dumb for a fighter if he was to walk into the fight like this. Looks dummy. Looks real dumb. Yeah, we do it spiritually all the time. We do it spiritually. I've, I see some people spiritually going like, open your eyes up. Stop dancing on the floor, in the ring. You need to have your eyes open, church. Amen. So there are two things when you have dedicated eyes that could be problems. Number one is going in blind. All right, this is a term that you use when you know nothing and you're going into the battle anyways. So a lot of fighters fight the devil blind. When there's, a, when there's an easy solution for this, the solution is ask for help. Amen. Ask for help. There are people in your corner that God has placed there for you to ask for help. We have pastor, we have connect group leaders, leaders in the church that you can go to and ask for help. The problem is we want to hold in everything to ourselves. We would rather fight blind than show any weakness. Like as a leader, I'm telling you right now, I can't read your mind. It's hard. It's like trying to read my wife's mind. Impossible. Impossible. I am telling you right now, like I cannot tell. The only way I can tell is when you come to church like this. What's wrong with you? Nothing. Nothing's wrong with me. How do you know? Maybe because you came in looking like there's something wrong with you. Amen. We can't tell. Like we try our best as leaders, but I'm telling you right now, the best thing you can do so that you don't go into a fight blind is that you ask for help. Ask your leaders. God has placed them there for you. We always say, oh, I didn't want to be a burden to you. I didn't, I didn't want you to have all this pressure. So pastor left all of Australia to come here so that you could say, so, he, so that he couldn't help you. He literally left his countries to be here in the spot so that you can ask him for help. It's better for you to open up now than in two years time and it's way bigger than what it could have been if you opened up your eyes earlier. Like way easier. If you think that you're being a burden when you're trying to ask for help, you're not. 
You're, you're going to make it worse. Don't go and blind into a fight. Ask for help. Ask for help, church. Amen. That's the first part. The second part is going into the tunnel. So what this means is tunnel vision. Okay. It means that you are closed off. So tunnel vision means this is all I can see. All right. But you need to see everything. You need to see everything in a wide scope. Now in rugby, I had tunnel vision all the time. Okay. I was supposed to run into gaps. Instead, I'm running into the problems. I'm running into contact. Okay. So one time uh, off kickoff, I took the ball and I ran straight. And the guy that was in front of me was, um, was a big fella. Probably 250 kgs, I don't know. It looked like he was like that. So I ran into him and we collided. My elbow went this way and he went that way. And my elbow was like sticking out of my arm. And so the physio like almost broke my arm when he tried to pop it back in. But see what happens when you're running with tunnel vision is that if we do this spiritually, we start to just focus on our problem that's in front of us. We aren't focused on who else is on the field that could attack you. Like one night, we had so many people saved at a concert. But one of the brothers was like, man, I stuffed up my looks. I suck. And he left and went home early. What? Because you're focusing on your problems. There was fruit at the altar. Because you left early, who knows? You could have fellowshiped with them. But because you let the battle finish right there, because your tunnel vision was on yourself, fruit went unwitnessed to that we're at the altar who does that who, who, who's, who's doing that spiritually ask yourself that question because there are a lot of fruit that have been coming through our church we need men and women that aren't going to be tunnel vision focus on their problems and focus on the people that are coming through these doors you don't understand the type of revival that is happening here in only hunger like a lot of a lot of people are wanting this revival a lot of people want to see this revival, but we can get tunnel visioned. We can just focus on our success, focus on our problems, forget about the fruit that's coming through the door. Are you ready to rumble tonight, church? Let's close tonight with, let's get ready to rumble. Amen. So James 4, 7, it says, therefore submit to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. It says, resist the devil. Okay. So resist does not mean do nothing. Like, I don't know where gun is, but when the cops were trying to arrest him and they were saying, stop trying to resist arrest, that's because he was trying to fight back. <laughs> Amen? Okay, so doesn't mean don't do anything. Doesn't mean let the devil win. It means you've got to be willing to fight back. You've got to resist the devil. It's going to be an ongoing fight. Now, Muhammad Ali developed a term called the rope dope Now, I mentioned this at the start of the sermon where he would sit on the ropes and he would allow George Foreman to attack him okay and so through that George Foreman got tired all right and so we need to do that spiritually we need to do that spiritually we need to prepare ourselves spiritually Muhammad Ali had to do a lot of cardio he had to do a lot of core work in order for him to handle the fight that he was going to have with George Foreman he already had a plan okay and so here is our basic plan as Christians that we need to prepare the same way James 4, 7, resist the devil and he will flee from you. We need some spiritual cardio and, and, and core, amen. So number one is cardio. What that is, is prayer and reading. We need to develop a prayer and reading life. You can't tell me you love God, but you don't read his word. You can't tell me you have a relationship with God, but you don't pray with him. If you are dedicated, you will do it. The problem is we get unfit. We get unfit because we stop praying and stop reading then you're like, why is it so hard? It's hard because you've stopped training. You've stopped your cardio training. When the devil comes at you, pray more. When you don't know what to do, read more. All the answers are in the Bible. All of them are in the Bible. You know, and I love, I love seeing the, the four-man challenge group chat. Love it, love the games chat. See all the videos, I love the uploads. But if you can take time to video yourself and upload it, you can take time to read the Bible and upload your revelation. 115 participants in the Knowing Your Sword group. I love it, it's been blowing up. Dang it, you guys made my point even better. Shout out to the ladies that have been reading, to the men that are reading too. Please, I encourage you, I encourage you, read your Bible, pray every day. 
we might have to do a remix so that we remember the old songs we used to sing in Sunday school. Amen? I mean, I love it. You don't have to post up a four-point sermon. Like, point one, point two, point three, point four. No. Just say, you know, this point convicted me so much. Have a great day, guys. <laughs> you know, you don't have to spit out the revelation of God. We have, we have a guy in our church, Paul. He posts up questions at 2 a.m. in the morning. Praise the Lord, I love seeing that. Like, I love seeing that. I get to answer questions at 2 a.m. in the morning because he's reading his Bible. What time? You can read the Bible at any time. Whatever time suits you, read the Bible. Ask questions. It's so that you can know your sword, so you can use it to cut the devil. Amen? Number two is core. All right? So the core is Jesus. A spiritual battle... In a spiritual battle, what you will need is Jesus. When my sister would ask Ebony, where does Jesus live? Ebony would always say, in our hearts. The moment that you allow Jesus Christ into your heart, the choices and decisions that you make become so much clearer. Like, Gunny wouldn't have made those choices if he didn't have Jesus in his heart. Everyone in our church wouldn't have made those choices if they didn't have Jesus in their heart. When the devil is throwing depression, failure, and mistakes at you, in your core, you need Jesus Christ. Galatians 2.20, it is no longer I who live but Christ um, that lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Jesus Christ loved you and he gave himself for you. In a spiritual battle, there are going to be times where you need to resist the devil. I have gone through countless battles, countless battles. What got me through is the times I would come to prayer, I would pray and worship God and I would say, Jesus, I thank you for your precious blood you have shed for me, that you will take my place even when I deserved hell. So simple. Yeah, it convicts me every time I say it. I make my problem bigger than what Jesus Christ did. I make my pain bigger than the pain he had to endure. I make everything about me. But then as soon as I remember what he has done for me, it's like, I've been set free. Jesus Christ is in my corner, yelling out combos. Left, right, uppercut, kick. Wait, what are you doing? It's a boxing match. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. He's the man, I'm telling you. James 4, 7. Therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. After the eighth round, George Foreman folded and he was knocked out. Let me tell you that there's going to be a round where the devil folds and he flees. And you will also have the victory that Jesus Christ has given us. But it comes with you resisting. Amen. That is all I have for tonight. Let's bow our heads in respect to God and in respect to each other. Tonight's message was a message.